On day six in Paris, the warm weather has enveloped Roland Garros as the top stars eye spots in week two. There is a round of 16 lineup to complete. The matches continue around the ground. Welcome to live at Roland Garros on YouTube, Facebook, the official website and app. And here for you a little of what we have in store for you on tonight's show. Federer sails into the round of 16. Well, it's not so straightforward for the 11-time champion. On the women's side, the number two seed is sent home packing. And Daniela and Nick enjoy a day out in the French capital. <laughs> Welcome to tonight's show. Daniela Hanskova, she's not with us in the studio this evening. As you've seen, she's been out and about. And as I've just seen, Nick has been too, which makes me think, Nick, that maybe did I miss the I, I email, did send you a couple the text of messages? Right? There's that. many ways to get in touch with me I to feel tell like me maybe that you're I'm going in out a little in bit of trouble, right? <laughs> no, no, I don't think the messages came through. <laughs> next time, Gigi, next time. Well, it was a beautiful day in Paris, out and about with Daniela. You'll see more of that soon. But also, it's been a beautiful day here today. It felt like walking into the grounds today. It's the first day of summer. It's in the mid 70s, maybe mid 20s Celsius. And this weekend is meant to be H O T hot. <laughs> there was a holiday in France yesterday, so a lot of people have used this as a long weekend and just extending things. And it's the perfect weekend to do so because, as Nick said, the temperatures are high. People today, sun cream, hats, taking in lots and lots of liquid and really just enjoying the tennis because it's been an absolutely perfect day for the tennis. Well, a lot of those people are still packed into Court Philippe Chatrier, which is where we find Eli Weinstein first. Eli, what is happening inside Centre Court right now? Rafa Nadal has dropped a set. Last year, it didn't happen until the quarterfinals. This year, against David Goffin. Now, it happened today. He was The match started quickly. Rafa was up, but David Goffin started playing. And in the third set, he managed to hold on. He managed to break at the end of the set. And we have ourselves a ball game on this court, which is Philippe Chatrier. It's full. There isn't an empty seat. And the sun is shining. The weather is a regular Côte d'Azur sun, guys. It's hot. It's Rafa Nadal conditions. And yet... He's being challenged, I promise you. Like, there have been some long rallies, and Rafa's been hitting really hard, grunting hard, kind of trying to, you know, uh, impress his opponent. David, just on the other side, not a sound, and returning everything, and returning everything, and then putting a winner once Rafa is off. You can tell us that Rafa is very nervous. He's pumping fists a lot after, after points. Uh, he's serving double faults, which you don't see often. He's not too happy with the ball boys because the balls aren't coming from the right side. Remember, they always have to come from the, the right side. So, yeah, there's, there's some nerves out on court. There's definitely, it's definitely not easy. And Eli, in terms of the atmosphere, Rafa Nadal, an absolute legend here, but I've noticed the crowd very loud behind Goffin because they want this to continue for as long as it possibly can. Yep, Gigi, you're absolutely right. Not only do they want him to continue, but David Goffin, being French, uh, Francophone Belgium, he's almost one of, one of theirs. So, you know, they're pulling for him, and the Belgians love their Roland Garros. They come a lot. They come from Belgium, and they're supporting the, their players. They're big fans. They're good fans. They're, they're passionate fans. So, yeah, there's atmosphere on Court Philippe Chatrier. Awesome atmosphere. It's the place to be. Eli, thank you so much. I, I'm going to guess that you'll keep us updated there with Rafa in danger a little bit. First set dropped for, since last year's quarterfinals, as you said. Let's go ahead and see how this played out for Rafa because it was a shock because Gigi early in this match, it was straightforward for Rafa Nadal. He goes up a set and then he goes up 3-1 in the second set. He was in fine form, but then Goffin just starts to get his way into it. It was a 28-minute first set for Rafa Nadal. 3-1 on clay the head-to-head -head prior to this. The one win for Gotham was in the hard courts. The three wins for Nadal came on the clay, and we started to think this is how it's going to go. But Goffin played some great, great tennis to get back into this. He was thumping the forehand as hard as he could. He was drawing errors from a slightly tentative Nadal, and he got himself a set. Yeah, I certainly did. And look at that calm, cool, collected <laughs> Goffin. They've played four times before. He's won once, but he's never beaten Rafa on clay. So that's the challenge in front of David Goffin. What about for another great champion today here at Roland Garros, Roger Federer playing in his 400th career Grand Slam singles match and Federer taking on Kasper Ruud, the 20 year old from Norway and Federer in the first two sets, Gigi, just really no trouble. Had to save a couple set points in set three. You can see using that net play today, winning 21 from 27 points at the net, hitting 52 winners. And you have to feel like Federer, what, he looks 
Is that an A-plus performance from him today? It was pretty good. He never truly looked troubled against Kasper Ruud, and he's the first player in history to have reached 14 round of 16s here at Roland Garros. Wow, and he's also the oldest man to be in the fourth round here since uh, Nicola Piatrangeli. That was back in 1972, the Italian champion Federer, 37 years young, 205 days old. And guess what? There's an overhead winner. That was one of his 52 winners today. And Raj is into the round of 16. Let's go ahead and hear his thoughts after the win. I enjoyed the match. I thought it was tough, you know, even though I had a, a good run there for a while. And that always is very important for me to know as well that I can run through a set and a half and just uh, take care of business. And it um, gives me confidence for the, for the next match, that's for sure. The first match of the day saw the shock of the day so far. It was on Philippe Chetre. It involved Carolina Pliskova, the world number two. Now, she was the only player remaining who could challenge Naomi Osaka uh, for the world the number way. one position. A few things had to fall into place. The first thing was to come through this match. She was up against Petra Martic. And it's turned out to be, well, for Petra Martic, showed absolutely no fear against Pliskova, who in the past, Nick, has said, I don't like playing on the clay, but she's a former semi-finalist here. And she won the big title in Rome coming into Roland Garros. Yeah, you're right. And a lot of people tipping her to win this title, but she actually said after this match she felt like today that the court out there on court Philippe Chatre was playing a little bit slower, and Martic has been the form player on clay. She's won 14 from 16 of her last clay matches, and look at how pumped up she was there to get closer to this win over Pliskova. She last reached the fourth round here in Roland Garros, Petra Martic, in 2012. She won her first title on the tour this year. What a win for Petra Martic, the biggest win of her career. And very shortly after this match, we got the thoughts of her coach, Sandra Zanieszka. It's tough against her because she's putting a lot of pressure and you don't want to be the one that's running behind and just retrieving the balls because then it's not really the way to win against her. So I just told her, you know, put pressure whenever you can and try not to fall back, run to every ball and, and just fight. And yeah, it worked. We don't like to set goals based on result. We like to set goals based on the things that she needs to check off when she's playing. Um, and so far she's doing it great. So. You know, I always say that the result is going to come secondary. If she's going to be doing the right things, the result is going to come. And yeah, we will just have to see how far she can go. Welcome to week two. Thank you. <laughs> no number one ranking for Pliskova. What about another former number one player in action today? Garbina Muguruza. She's the champion here in 2016. And today, this is a third round match. You're not wrong seeing those two names next to each other. Muguruza taking on Alina Svitolina. And gosh, Muguruza has just looked so good this tournament. She lost her first set she played. She's won the uh, last six six in a row she's also won her last six third round appearances here six and oh overall sixth year in a row she's into the fourth round and you have to say now is Muguruza one of the favorites let's go ahead and hear from the two-time slam champ after this win I mean playing the top players is always uh, a challenge I would say that every match here is a challenge as well so but yeah, it's, you can always tell that um, a top players is always a tricky match. And um, I was happy to, to face it. Some people say early. I think third round is a, is a pretty good round. So <clears throat> yeah, I would like to play as many matches like that. That's going to give me a lot of confidence and a lot of meaning. A bonus match for the spectators on Philippe Chatry, but not for the home fans. Luca Pui, a former world number 10. He's had a shocking season so far since the semi-finals in Australia, defeated by Martin Kleesan. He had chances, Pui, to close out this match today when they resumed in the fifth set, but a, a relieved, I would say, Martin Kleesan to come through, get the win over Luca Pui, and he moves through to face Karen Hashinoff. Very happy Martin Cleese and Kane Shikuri, boy does he make life tough for himself. Nick, he now has the record for best to a level deciding set record in the open era. Does he? Well, he <laughs> likes to go to that deciding set often, but this guy, Laszlo Jira, he's had a great run on the clay this year. This was a, a tough win, but a good win for Nishikori. Nishikori was a double breakdown, love three down in that fifth set, but managed to turn it around. Good win for Nisha Corey. What about for Benoit Pair? He played himself a five-setter that second round match, maybe the match of the tournament against Pierre Hugues Ebert just a couple days ago, coming back out on court against a tough challenge in Pablo Carreno Busta. 
but you can see there for the Spaniard having issues with his right thigh and then had to retire Gigi. So guess what? Benoit Pair into the fourth round here at Roland Garros for the first time in his career. We had a cracker first match up on Susan Longley. Lost for three and a half hours. It was a 43 game third round match with eventually Elise Mertens had match points, the world number 20, but Anastasia Savastova celebrating there the 12th seed to come through. She's reached the semi final at the US Open. Mertens was slipping all over the court in the end of that third set, but Savastova, who drop shotted her way to victory. She sure did, and while most of these matches today around the grounds were third round matches, Gigi, it was Madison Keys and Priscilla Hahn, the Australian, who had to play a holdover match from last night, and it was Keys who came through in three sets, and she'll now take on Anna Blinkova in the third round, and perhaps maybe a fourth round matchup with Naomi Osaka looming. I can tell you that Rafa Nadal is 5-3 up and David Goffa in that fourth set, having dropped the third set. So we'll keep you right across that. But the problem for Eli this evening is there is so much going on. There is just <laughs> not one court to focus on. So the question now for you, Eli, are you still there? Have you moved? What are you up to? <laughs> I've definitely moved. Uh, <laughs> I am in court 14, okay? As you can see right now, Ronaldo is going to show you. Look at what's going on here. It is madness here on court 14. Sorry, Corentin Moutet is out on court, and we are in set number five. And he was a breakdown already in the fifth, and he managed to come back, break back. It's now 3-3, 15-30. Uh, in fact, I think that we've just moved on to... No, no, we are at 15-30. We are this court 14 does not have one seat empty and not one seat standing. There are people everywhere and the atmosphere is absolutely mad and it's really hot, remember? So everybody's standing together. It feels like a bit like if you're in the subway, but watching a tennis court. I don't know if you can hear that. It is now, he saved one, so it's 30-40. Still another break point to save for Corentin Moutet to uh, hold on to his serve and go up 4-3. Tension is at its max out on court 14. And Eli, usually you have a courtside seat, but it must be a hot ticket right now because you're up, what, the very top of the stadium? Yeah, there's no way to get courtside. Even even I couldn't get courtside. I don't know if you know, <laughs> you realize what that means. Like, usually I just show up and everybody's like, hey, let you through. Nope, it's not Eli. today. It's not today's org, as they say. Uh, this There was no getting through. It is crazy. It's the second hottest place to be. Uh, I don't know if you could hear that. That was saving break point number two. So we're a deuce. 3-3 in the fifth set after three hours and four minutes of play. Corentin Moutet against Juan Ignacio Londero from Argentina. Okay, very, very good. Eli, thank you very much. And we will keep an eye. We'll keep a finger on the pulse there, court 14 and around the ground. So there's a lot of tennis happening still. What about the happenings on social media? There's the buzz about hashtag RG19. Okay, Gigi, this was from yesterday, but it was trending overnight, so we felt like we had to show you. Novak Djokovic won his match yesterday. That wasn't the big news. The news was his little boy, there's <laughs> Stefan, watching Dad for the first time. That's quite a serious look on his son's face. Look, I'm looking at Dad. Dad's got the win. Yeah, Dad gets a lot of wins. Lovely. It's so nice, though, because so many players talk about the fact that it's so nice for their children to get to an age where they can sit still long enough. And I remember when Gilles Muller won his title in Sydney, his two sons were there, and he said they were just watching iPads. They weren't even watching me as I won the title. But it's so nice for them to have a very special moment and have their children watching on. Yeah, Novak said that he was impressed with Stefan's patience and that it was one of the most special moments of his career. Now, we're staying with Offspring. We now have Serena Williams, who posted this picture today of herself and her daughter, Alexis Olympia Ahanian Jr., who has her own Instagram account. I actually looked up the numbers. Her daughter has a following of 574,000. Her daughter's doll has a following of 129 thousand people Anna's and the mum her mum is in the millions yeah 11 million to be exact for Serena so cute they're dressed alike in Serena's kit for RG19 and what about um, dressing up a Paris icon the Eiffel Tower today through Sunday Gigi it will be wearing well the emblem of Roland Garros really special it's a holiday weekend here in France and that just debuted this morning I'm being told that I think you said Eli took it as a challenge. You said he couldn't get courtside. Eli, are you now courtside in court 14? <laughs> I mean, how long do you think I was going to oh stay gosh. stuck up there? Wow. I'm down courtside. There's Corentin Mute right behind me. And Ronaldo, if you can show what's going on, we can get a look at this, at this court. Look at how 
there is not an empty seat. It is packed. Juan Ignacio Londero has broken. That's the bad news for Colton Uh It's the good news for Juan Ignacio. Uh, he's serving to go up 5-3 and potentially close this match. But something tells me it ain't over till it's over. Certainly. Yeah, we totally agree with that. And <laughs> Eli's court side, uh, uh, I would challenge you to go on the court, but we'll just, we'll, I won't no, say that, that out don't loud. Do that. You just did. Go Eli, don't listen to Nick. On don't court. <laughs> we're going to move on and we're going to head into what is our question of the day. Okay, so this came from last night because. There, it's been a trend, right, in 2019, the underarm serve? It feels quite fashionable. I think anything that Nick Kyrgios does, and he's done it a few times, becomes a talking point. It becomes a discussion. Is it right? Is it wrong? Is he, is he crazy? Is it not? But the underarm serve is something that I just feel people have been talking an awful lot about in 2019. Well, and I mentioned last night because yesterday it was Sasha Bublik who took on Dominic Team, and he tried an underarm serve himself, and that made ripples throughout social media. Here's Bublik on center court against Dominic team taking on well trying that underarm surf here it is and let's get Dominic team's thoughts on that very shot to be honest it's it's a good choice against players like us who are that far behind the baseline there's there's nothing bad about it and um, I mean I was prepared for that so that was no problem but f I mean for me it was was tough because it was I had difficulties to find a good return position I didn't practice it, but I just um, expected it from, from time to time. And I mean, at least he didn't hit me an ace, but I think he won two out of three. So as I said, there's nothing wrong about it. It's sometimes quite a good tactic, but um, some players do it well, him, Kyrgios, and against these guys, you have to be prepared to sometimes make a sprint when you return. So that's Dominic team's view on it. He said, look, it's absolutely fair enough and it's, it's quite a good play against someone that stands so far back. The debate will continue. We've got some people to hear from, but you may have heard an awfully loud cheer a short while ago, and that is because the 11-time champion, he has now reached his 14th, Roland Garros. He's the second man, because Roger Federer <laughs> did it a little bit earlier. David Goffin taking that third set, but in the end Nick oh, Nadal so got the job done. Yeah, this was a big win for Nadal, and I think he will say as much when we hear from him in press. You can find that after the match on RolandGarros.com, but Gigi, this is a big one. Four sets over Goffin, and maybe for Rafa, he gets past a little trouble spot here at Roland Garros in 2019. Yeah, important, I think, for Rafa Nadal there. So four sets he's through in two hours and 49 minutes. The matches do continue. Remember, on the app or the website, just keep an eye on things. But back to, I think, our question of the day. Is an underarm serve a legitimate play? And it's something that we talked about Sasha Bublik doing. It's not the first time that Roland Garros has seen such a thing, Nick. No, certainly. And that's actually happened uh, a few times before. I love it, by the way. I think it's a great play. I think it should be used more. But what about Michael Chang? This is 1989 against... Yvonne Lendl, and I don't think Lendl was very impressed by this, was no, he? No, there is a, a close-up of his face, and he's like, what on earth was that? But it's just something you didn't see. Sure, and it worked there. <laughs> Chang was cramping in that match, and there's Lendl, not too happy. Yeah, that's no, I'm not impressed, even Lendl said, okay, so that? you're doing that to me. And here's 1999. That's, this is the final, actually. Martina Hingis against Steffi Graf, and there it worked, too. It's the kind of thing the underarm serve. And look at Steffi Graf. I don't know whether she's thinking, you know, good on you for doing that, or I can't believe you did that. But it is something that feels the underarm serve. If you throw it in every now and then, it surprises them. But it's like if you're going to drop shot every single point, eventually your opponent's going to get wise to it and it's going to get themselves forward. But but every now and then, maybe it's okay. I'm with you. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's it's part of the game. But we did decide to get some views of some very interesting people when it came to this subject of the underarm serve days there are you know some guys that are playing really really far back especially on the returns so you know I think if they were playing in a, in a regular match and, play, and they were playing very deep I think a legitimate shot is obviously a drop shot which you know everybody uses um, you know and in certain situations obviously that would be applicable for you know for a for a serve if a, if a returner is that far back too my the time that I used it, I only used it once, was, you know, because of my circumstances, I was cramping very severely. Um, I think if it's in a, another situation where, you know, people are using it because they're because they're tanking a match, then then obviously, you know, that's not going to be, a, you know, acceptable. You have two choices. The best option is true that sometimes could be a surprise, but normally, I said, when you make many times, 
after the first time the, the other player is ready. Is, uh, is the, yes, and then it's not too easy to win the point. If there is, the rules doesn't say anything about the underarm serve, then why not to use it? So if somebody stays too far, why I would serve from the up if, he, if I can make him uh, surprised? But of course, as I said, it has to be in the terms that it's a real fight. It's not uh, making fun of the opponent. Did you ever do it? No, me not. I, I don't have the hand to serve underarm. My underarm would be flying to baseline, so <laughs> I, I'd never risk it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you have to do it with respect, but for the most part, it sounds like the experts or the guys that are on tour, it sounds like they're okay with it. But what about all of you out there on social media? We put this out on our Facebook and on our Twitter, and here are the results. 71% of people say, yes, indeed, the underarm serve is a legitimate play and of course we always want your voices to be heard so we'll have more great debates to come and just to update you right now Sloane Stevens was taken into a third set by Polona Herzog and she's up 3-0 in the third set so Stevens trying to get back into week two here for a second year in a row. Keep an eye on at Roland Garros on Twitter because we'll post the question our debate of the day our question of the day in probably the small hours of the morning. So keep an eye on that and make sure you vote and then tune in at the same time tomorrow night. Right, it is time for us to find out what Camille Pain has been up to today out and about in Roland Garros. Good afternoon, guys. I'm happy to see you again. Today I was wondering, is that a good strategy to come to the nets on clay court? That is an issue, but I believe that this guy behind me, Roger Federer, he definitely wants to come to the net because it works. 30% of his total winning points are coming to the net. And I think it's a very good strategy because here in Roland Garros, when the sun is out, the clay is really dry and the clay always is quicker in Roland Garros. He always uses uh, serve and volley, of course, even on second serve, and it works really well on clay. Actually, not only Roger Federer thinks it's a pretty good strategy to come to net on clay court. There's also Nicolas Mahu, the French player, who's doing really great on clay court, serve and volley almost every point on first and second serve. He's putting a lot of pressure on his opponents. It's very difficult to do some passage choke when it goes really fast and the ball can stay really low on this clay court here in Roland Garros. There's also Stefano Tsitsipas, who's very good, very efficient at the net, coming quite often, not only serve and volley, but in the game, stepping into the court a lot, and he's winning a lot of points at the net. So maybe next time you're going to play on clay court, think about me, come to the net on the first point and surprise your opponent. See you later. <laughs> Thanks for that, Camille. And how about that strategy of serving and volleying on clay? It's worked well for Federer, who's 71 from 88 net points this tournament. That is a huge number for him. We saw Nikola Mahu in that piece. He's on court. He was on court just a few minutes ago, and he's out to Leonardo Meyer. And so Meyer moves on. He's going to take on Roger Federer. So he'll, save, he'll, he'll face more <laughs> net points in the next round. But um, I might get in trouble of what's to come here. But I got the chance to, the honor, to hang out with Daniela Hantakova in Paris. And she told me how it's important to take time away from the courts during a Grand Slam. at the Grand Slams do players get days off and we thought we're in Paris so we've got to go out and about and look who we have. Hi Daniela. Hey, so up? I felt like you've got to show us around Paris your favorite spots how you rest and relax on a day off. Let's do this. Okay let's go. Ladies first. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, look oh, here. Wow. <laughs> it's amazing look where we are. it's like we're in Paris. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so for you, when you're in Paris, what are the favorite things that you love to do? I used to love walking around in the parks, whether it was here or around the Louvre. Actually also doing a lot of sightseeing with my family. It's just important, I think, to, to find that balance between taking your mind away, but at the same time being professional and, you know, still remembering that you are here actually for Roland Garros. I feel like we should be that zip lining guy. Who's that's actually coming. that's actually really cool. You know, um, a lot of the players they like to do things with adrenaline. So would you do that do? zip lining at the Eiffel would, Tower? I would love to do that. Let's get an Eiffel Tower selfie. Okay. And then we've got more to see in Paris. Okay, right? let's do it. Okay. Like One, real tourists. Two. Wait, we don't see the Eiffel Tower. Where is it? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> My camera skills need work, right? No, you did well. What is 
is the importance of relaxing when you're at a big tournament like this? Being outside and in places like this and when you just do the normal things, it helps you to step out of the tennis bubble, which it's so important to be able to zoom in when you are on the court and playing the matches, but also at the same time to zoom out. Okay, after all, we are in Paris, so should we get a crepe, a cappuccino, something delicious? Please, I've been waiting for this <laughs> okay, all afternoon. Let's go. <laughs> Here we go. Merci oh. beaucoup. Hi. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you so Look much. Perfect. You're welcome. I also feel like there's nothing quite like Paris where we've got a, a beautiful street side cafe mm. and you get to sit and have your coffee, people watch, and it's nice to relax because even for you as players, when you've got that little bit of time, just to feel like you're part of this world. Exactly. And actually, you feel like uh, you are in a theater or cinema and you just wonder with your mind around what other people, what they what they do throughout the day. Well, chin chin, bon appétit, chin today, bon appétit. and um, thanks for hanging out in yeah, Paris. Thank it's, you. It's, it's wonderful. Beautiful. I mean, I love Roland Garros, but it's wonderful to get out and about. Too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, you look like having a lovely time. I, I love the turtleneck. I mean, very Parisian. I, I was trying to be. I was just trying to keep up with Danielle's fashion. She's always so well-dressed. <laughs> but the importance of, of just taking things in. Of course. Yeah, right? No, I, of there course. was intrepid reporting. Someone no, had to do had it. To Danielle do it. went to the spa. I had to go out with her in Paris. And I, I just don't think there's a third one planned. <laughs> or <laughs> maybe I'd be out and about. But it's, <laughs> it's mine if it happens. Time to move on to a gentleman. And I'm glad we spoke to him before the tournament started because he has a habit of getting into five set matches and he's a little bit tired as he goes through those but we had a fresh Kane Ishikuri who sat down and was quizzed about all things French. Quick game, very easy. Okay. You're going to flip over a few cards okay. and tell me what you see and see if you are able to name what you see on the card, okay? Let's start over here on this pile. Cheese with... These ham, yeah, too, and these, yeah, pickles and potatoes. I never had before. Raclette? Yeah. You've never had ah, it. You heard about it? I heard about it, but I never had before. Okay, moving on. Next category. This one. That was food. This is. Do you know what that is? Yeah, this is opera. Very nice. Opera. Next category is sports. Who is that? Um, Mbappe. Do you know his celebration? Do you know how he does his celebration for goals? Does that mean something? No. No. <laughs> and finally, we have culture. Who are these guys? Are they French? Yeah. I didn't know. No. <laughs> the punk. I didn't know they are French. Yeah. You listen to them? Sometimes? Yes, yes, yeah. many. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very much. <laughs> We're keeping abreast here of all things happening around the grounds here on day six. And there's been a couple match points, but Eli Weinstein, we join you live because, well, he wasn't able to finish it out. Was Juan Ignacio Landero? Yeah, two match points. He had two match points. And I can tell you, this place went absolutely bananas when, uh, when uh, Corentin Moutet saved both of them. Remember, this court is half sunken. It's now a deuce at 5-4. This court is half sunken in the ground, so everybody who's not in seats is standing around. There are like three or four rows around standing, and this is an unfinishable point that's going on. You can hear the crowd there. Okay. <laughs> and I'll let you guess who won that point. Um, it's not match point, it's break point, as you may have guessed, or break back point for Corentin Moutet. Um, I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was a bit late. Back it's break back point. So he can come back to five all, and who knows how long this one could go. Listen to the crowd. This is not tennis. This is Davis Cup. Eli, enjoy your evening out there watching and seeing if Corentin Mute can turn that around and come through. We have for you the order of play for tomorrow. It's another cracking lineup. We start on court Philippe Chatry, and we have defending champion Simona Halep kicking things off. Then we have Novak Djokovic going for the no lay slam, the second time he's held all four at the same time. The all French affair, how intriguing is that? And then Serena Williams wrapping things up. Over on court Susan Longlin, and again, look at the names, Nick, that we find on Susan Longlin. Yeah, there's really exciting matches there. Of course, Naomi Osaka taking on Siniakova, who's the number one player in doubles. You've got Dominic Team. You've got Ash Barty taking 
on Andrea Petkovic. There's a lot of great matchups there. The court, uh, Simone Matu, you've got Sasha Zverev, Madison Keys, Juan Martin Del Potro. Uh, wow, we are into the total meat of the tournament. And again, you guys, tomorrow, it's going to be hot. Conditions will change for the players. We're going to watch out for that. Yeah, so if you're coming down here, make sure you're prepared for the hot weather. Don't forget, as the matches continue, keep an eye on the app, Twitter, the official website, and you'll get everything that's happened this evening. And you can look through all the courts, the singles and doubles that's going to be taking place. But a little while ago, Nick promised that he'd take me out for dinner this evening <laughs> because I didn't get to go out and about in Paris. So thank you, Nick. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> uh, I think we're going to have our nightly routine of sushi where we usually see a certain German player named Sasha. We certainly do. <laughs> but thank you very much for joining us. We are with you nightly from 7 o'clock, bringing you everything that's taken place. Daniela hands it over. Well, she's been up to something else. You'll find out about that tomorrow night. But from Nick and myself and everyone involved in the show, have a great evening, and we'll see you again tomorrow.